In this video, I will be discussing John Edward Millay's Ophelia painting. I will be breaking down the painting through the use of iconography, gender studies, and cultural studies. I will also be covering the Pre-Raphaelite movement, which led up to this painting's creation. The Ophelia painting is 30 by 44, and it is oil on canvas. It was painted in 1851. Currently is being held in the Tate Collection in Berlin, London. It is not out for display. The painting depicts a scene in the play Hamlet in which Ophelia allows herself to drown after finding out that Hamlet killed her father. John Everett Millay was born June 8, 1829 in Southampton, United Kingdom. Millay is the founder of the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood, which he started inside of his own home in 1849. The Brotherhood began as a rebellion against the teachings of the British Royal Academy. A few of the founding members and most notable of the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood include Thomas Hulner, William Holin Hunt, as well as William Michael Rossetti and his brother Dante Gabriel Rossetti. The Pre-Raphaelites believed that art had become too influenced by the artist Raphael, and they wanted to get back to how art used to be. The belief in art being too influenced by the artist Raphael is where the pre Raphaelites get their name from. Pre Raphaelite meaning for before Raphael. The pre Raphaelites came up with a few tenets early on for what they would stand for. A few of these early tenants included studying nature closely so that it could be expressed fully to make genuinely imaginative art and to just simply make good art in general. One of the earliest paintings of the pre raphaelite movement, which gained a lot of recognition, was Christ and the House of His Parents, made in 1850. The painting became well known for the controversy surrounding it. The painting depicts a red-headed Jesus in the house of peasants. It was not very well received by the general public. Not everyone was critical of the painting, however. Art critic John Ruskin enjoyed the painting. He took such a liking to the painting that he began to support the Pre-Raphaelites openly. He also began to fund them financially. With his funding, they were able to procure more supplies. Thanks to Ruskin's support, Pre-Raphaelite art became more popular. It should be noted that they share a very common theme in many of their pieces for women and what their roles are in them. One common way women were depicted is as being docile and pure. In Leonid's The Magdalene in Modern Times, the mythology of fallen women in Pre-Raphaelite painting. She points out that women were expected to act as docile creatures, and while they were being courted, they were expected to stay faithful and pure the entire time. The belief in proper womanhood was much stronger in the minds of upper class citizens. For them, a woman being pure and submissive was understood as a given social quo. The idea of her womanhood was deeply rooted with religious justification. In the book 1920-1860, Walter Barber states that womanhood is not something that can change. It is set and backed by religious reasoning. Walter goes on to say that even the act of challenging the idea of proper womanhood could label someone as an enemy of God, this making them a fallen woman. Women who were fallen were seen to have no redeeming qualities, and thus they were expected to have only one fate waiting for them.
Ultimately, the fate of a woman who had fallen was death. The most common depiction of death was by suicide. In most cases, by jumping from heights such as bridges or cliffs, or simply by drowning. In Massey's Valerie's postmortem representation of female suicide by drowning in Victorian culture, she states that the lesson to be taught was that women who had fallen were better off dead. Water was seen to be a very feminine element. It is because of this that death by drowning was seen to be, as Racine states it, a matter of a very feminine death. Ophelia's death is never actually shown in the play. In Act 4, Scene 7, Gertrude reports to everyone that while they were out picking flowers, Ophelia climbed a willow tree and fell into the brook below. She made no attempts to get out of the water, however, and allowed herself to just sink to the bottom. The scene depicted comes from Act 4, Scene 7, in which Gertrude reports that Ophelia fell into a brook while they were out collecting flowers. She did not make any attempts to come up from the water and simply allowed herself to sink. The painting is representational art, and it has gigantic lines throughout it, which can be seen from Ophelia's dress as it is pumped up in the water. It makes use of warm primary and secondary colors, which come in from the flowers, which are yellow, blue, greens, purples, and also from the greens of the grass and surrounding plant life. The painting is asymmetrical, and Ophelia is the focal point of the painting. It has visually simulated texture coming from Ophelia's dress, as well as the surrounding foliage. The painting was praised in this time for its inclusion of such realism, even including reflection coming off from the water. Upon looking closely, the flowers rosemary, pansies, fennel, columbine, and violets are all around her. In the Victorian era, each flower would have a meaning due to the popularity of what is called Florography, also known as the language of flowers. Ophelia wears a ring of rosemary around her neck, which symbolize remembrance. They also float next to her. The pansies symbolize thought. The columbines symbolize courage and love. The violets, modesty, faithfulness. The funnel, strength. And the red poppy, which floats next to her, symbolizes sleep and death. The name of my art piece is The Time of a Woman. I use a 3D rendering program for the models. I wanted my art to show how women were depicted throughout the ages as a contrast from old and new. The images on both show what I feel to be representations of each during their time period. The artwork on the older model depicts women in a more docile and submissive manner, while for the newer model, I chose to show the contrasting idea of modern women becoming more empowered through different means, be it business or just simple social uprising, which is why I chose pictures of suffrage as well.